are a series of murders that have haunted Hampton Roads for decades. The Colonial Parkway killings. 30 years ago today, the second in that series of events shook Isle of Wight County. The deaths of David Knobling and Robin Edwards. Then your side's Andy Fox was there and looks back at the case and the plea from the victim's families for some kind of answer. Andy. David Knobling and Robin Edwards. What we've learned for the families left behind, you never get over it, and neither will we. After 30 years, still missing. We were there 30 years ago when Carl Knobling searched the banks of the James River for his son, David. And we were there after he found David. Me and one of the other detectives found David about 50 feet down, I guess. My emotions were tears. 20-year-old David was with a new friend, 14-year-old Robin Edwards, Robin's sister, she Jeanette. Did. She related more to older people. It didn't make sense that David would leave his Ford Ranger pickup, seen here in this crime scene photo, unlocked at Ragged Island back then or now. He doesn't leave his truck unlocked. The pickup had keys in the ignition, radio on, wallet, clothes, and shoes left in the truck. I think he was forced out of it. Robin and David possibly forced out and most likely walked down this pathway to the James River, shot and killed. Robin's mother, Bonnie Dotson. I have whole stretches of time that I don't remember because I've blocked them out because they're too painful. Bonnie in 1987. She had a beautiful smile and a loving way. To this day, the two families wonder what happened on that dark morning 30 years ago. Former Isle of Wight County Sheriff Charlie Phelps interviewed a suspect who admitted going into David's truck and taking out money from his wallet, which was confirmed during a polygraph. He admitted to me that he heard something coming out of the bushes that he got scared and ran. That same polygraph inconclusive that the suspect killed David and Robin. That suspect has since died. After 30 years, the families had their own theories. They might have interrupted a drug deal or something. And you the think that is a possible clean. motive for the killing? Yeah. The kids were clean. Their autopsies show that. There's a real possibility they made a, a telephone call. Investigators had another theory. Robin may have called someone to Ragged Island to buy marijuana. Robin and this guy had had a history. That's substantiated. Danny Plott was a Virginia State Police investigator who would later take over the case. I think they may have met this guy. He was a, he was a known drug dealer. Plot says the suspect wanted to have sex with Robin and may have forced Robin and David down to the water's edge at gunpoint. Robin shot first, and as he runs, he's shot in his shoulder, and when he's, uh, he was down, then, then the fatal wound happens. Plot also says there was evidence Robin had been sexually assaulted, but after three days in the water, the test inconclusive. 30 years later, Robin's name lives on. It's my daughter, Robin. Jeanette has remembered her sister the best way she can. Robin. She was always a person to try to help everybody, kind of like me. And she was always a really positive person. Both families seeking closure, but no, it will never come. The only way that I will get any answers to my questions are when I die and I see Robin in heaven. And then I won't know what happened to my daughter. An indescribable sadness. Carl, Jeanette, and Bonnie think whomever did this is likely already dead or is in prison and not talking. Tomorrow night, we report on a new book, A Special Kind of Evil, new revelations on the Colonial Parkway murders, and we investigate the question, are the eight killings really the work of one or two serial killers? I'll have that tomorrow. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.